Senator Barrasso. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, thanks for being here. Good to see you again. I want to turn to the crisis at the southern border and how it's overwhelming our health care system here in the United States. Uh, what we've seen on the news uh, reported and written and on uh, video and television, hospitals in sanctuary cities right now, New York City, Denver, San Diego, Chicago, Boston, tell us that they're at risk of collapsing financially due to the overwhelming number of illegal migrants flooding their emergency rooms and the clinics who are essentially getting free care, having the American people pay for their care. Clinic in Chicago uh, reported seeing nearly 16,000 migrants last year, illegal immigrants. The cost of their care totals over $30 million. This is what the hospital is reporting, paid for by American taxpayers. Uh, Denver Health was in the headlines uh, in uh, 2023, reported over 20,000 hospital visits from migrants. The hospital is now, not surprisingly, uh, in financial distress. Uh, these hospitals are now asking the federal government to bail them out. And it's completely Democrat-caused failure to enforce the law at the southern border. Can you please explain why it is the responsibility of hardworking American taxpayers to foot the bill for all of this care for people, nine million now from all across the world who have flooded their way into the United States? Senator, I appreciate the question. Uh, what I can tell you is that uh, we have extended the, the resources and authorities that we have at HHS to try to be there to help any healthcare facility when there is a way that we can go in to be supportive. Um, I don't know of a, a particular case that you might want to mention, but I know that we are prepared to be supportive of any facility where the, the, uh, the authorities that you have given us allow us to go in and support. Well, in terms of the, the, it's not hard to find stories about hospitals in one sanctuary city after another saying we are overwhelmed with the number of people that we're treating and have no way to recover the costs other than to turn to the American taxpayers. The federal government doesn't pay for the health care of every legal U.S. citizen. It seems like it's in the position now of having to do it for all these illegal immigrants. Why should the American citizens be forced to pay for illegal migrants to receive this same care for free? Because that's what's happening. Uh, Senator, I, as I said, uh, I, I don't know how particular states operate their health care systems uh, in, in, with, with regard to the folks that are coming in. But what I can tell you is that when we are approached, whether it's through the Medicare program, the Medicaid program, or simply those who are seeking uh, out other types of authorities and funds that could help them, we're ready to, to try to be well, responsive. You, you are aware that when, when a hospital is inundated with people who are not paying, they have to shift the cost to the people that are paying. And that's what's happening right now uh, all across the country and specifically at so many of the sanctuary cities. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something that uh, Senator Langford and Crapo asked about as well, and that's the nursing home staffing ratio requirements. Uh, you know, specifically, your department is proposing a rule on nursing home staffing ratios requiring a registered nurse to be present 24 hours a day. Currently, it's required eight hours. Uh, CNA hours uh, per patient per day increasing. And the hardship exemption for rural communities who can't find people to hire, uh, even though they try very hard, it's requiring much more paperwork. Most of the Wyoming nursing homes that I talk to, they would have to actually hire additional staff not, to, not in addition to taking care of the patients, but to just fill out the paperwork that, that your department is requiring. Look, we, we had concerns. We expressed them to uh, the director of Medicare and Medicaid, um, Brooks Lashur. She shared that the centers for Medicare and Medicaid have committed $75 million to support nursing staff in nursing homes. Huh? How do you plan for these funds to reach these rural communities that are really getting hammered by these additional rules? And only about four out, four out of five nursing homes say, we can't comply with what the administration is now forcing upon them all across the country. Senator, you packed a lot into that question. Uh, let me respond first to the issue of the funding, how we can make sure it gets into the rural, into rural communities. One of the things that we have done is made sure that we, we try to get those dollars into the communities that need it most to, to be able to staff up. Uh, but I'm, I must tell you, if you're, you're going to call yourself a nursing home, you should have a nurse that's present to provide care to the families that are leaving their loved ones there. Uh, it is uh, embarrassing that while not one of every five Americans lives in a nursing home, uh, nowhere near 60 million people live in a nursing home, one of five people who died from COVID died in a nursing home. 
we need to make sure that the standards that these homes have for the people that we love and leave in, in their uh, custody uh, will be the right care, and it will be with professional standards. And all we're seeking is to make sure that all nursing homes, many of them already do this, but all nursing homes meet the standards that you or I would expect if we're going to leave our loved one there. Well, then, Mr. Mr. Chairman, let me just say, and uh, my time has expired, so I won't go to an additional question. Only one in five nursing homes can meet the proposed requirements, even those trying to hire people can't find people to fulfill it. So four out of five nursing homes are going to be out of compliance with administration rules. And apparently what you're saying is that all of the nursing homes, these other nursing homes, are right now incompetent to provide care, and I think they're still providing pretty good care today. Thank you, Mr. Time Chairman. Time for the gentleman expired.